Stampers, this is Holly from Rubber Redneck. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and welcome to another Rubber Redneck Little Kisses video tutorial. This week over on my blog I am posting projects to celebrate Valentine's Day and promote my upcoming special Valentine class. I have a prize giveaway over there on my blog and each project that I am showcasing during this event on my blog has a free project sheet. I'm so excited about my upcoming special Valentine online class. It will feature six projects over two days, along with a bonus project on the third day. Each project will include a mini PDF and video tutorial. Be sure to visit my blog, rubberredneck.typepad.com, to find out more details about my upcoming special online class and to find out where to purchase the supplies to recreate this project and to download the free project sheet. Today's video I'm going to be featuring this little Shine On Valentine bag. Now if you happen to watch my Occasions Catalog Idea video, I showed this as an idea in that video for using the stamp set and our papers. It is featuring the Specialty Shine On Designer Series paper and that is some gorgeous fun paper. And it also is featuring the Blooming Love stamp set that is also available in the Occasions catalog. Now to create this fun and cute little bag, you will need your gift bag punch board. And once you have your gift bag punch board, you're going to want to pull out your stylus. And then you're going to want to cut one piece of Shine On Specialty Designer Series paper. And you want to cut that at 6 inches by 10 inches. Now this is some really fun paper. One side shines and has patterns, and the other side is the, with the co different colors. It comes in uh, Watermelon Wonder is one of the colors on that Shine On Specialty paper. And I'm using a different pattern from this one here. I wanted to show you another one created, created using a different pattern. So once you have that paper cut, you want your six inch across facing the top and the 10 inch length on the side here. And when you place this, I should also mention all the directions are right on your, the board. And then it says SML here. Those each stand for different sizes of the boxes. We're gonna be making the small box today. So you wanna place your shine on paper on the start line here, just line that up. And you wanna make sure it's tight on the right hand side. Once you have that uh, in there, you're gonna create the side to start out with. So you wanna take your stylus and draw your triangle here. And then you wanna draw the little side part on this as well, where it's gonna indent. So you just take the stylus right along there. And then you wanna make your mark for the side. So just crease that right there on, on the side mark. And then once you have that crease, then you want to punch. Now for my video, this is f too far out for me, so I got to bring this in. So other otherwise, it's going to not look like it's not punching easy because I don't have enough strength behind it. But it's really easy to punch when you have it up close to you. So then you also want to make sure you run the crease tool here across the edge to the edge of your gift bag punch board so you're creasing for the bottom. Now once you have that part done, you're going to slide this over so that your line, your crease line, lines up with your start line, the farthest one. And now we're going to be scoring for the front of the box. So you want to crease this along and then you want to crease at the small. And then again, you're going to punch. See, it's easy to punch. You just got to have it right up there by you, though. And with the thicker paper, it might hang up a little bit, so you might have to pull that out. Now, once you have that one scored, then you're going to slide this over to that start line again. And now we're going to be making the other side of the box. So you're going to take your stylus, go around the triangle up here, and then you want to add that center. So go down the side. And then you want to make sure you put your other side 
So, so crease that down as well. And then you want to go across your bottom. And then once you have that crease, then you're going to punch again. And then you're going to move that score line down to your start line again. And now we're going to be doing the back of the box. So what you want to do is you want to just come over here and score on that S. And then score across the bottom. And then you're going to want to punch again. And then you're going to slide your paper over to that start line again where the crease is. And then you're going to punch your end. And then once you have that punch, this is what it's going to look like when you're done. Now what we want to do is take some paper snips and we're going to trim a couple of things off on here and make things a little easier for assembling. There's going to be this little flap right here. You just want to cut that off so that's flush here. And then what you want to do is you're going to cut this at an angle. And then you want to do the same thing on the other side. You're going to cut this at an angle up to that score line. So that's what it'll look like so far. Then after you have that all cut, you want to go through and you're going to want to start creasing on those scored lines. So just fold on those scored lines first. And then what I do after I got that folded, I go back through and use my bone folder to get that creased even better. Then we're just going to keep folding everything over and crease that down good. And then with your sides, you kind of want to pinch these in gently. So then they're all pinched in. And then you want to take some tear tape adhesive and we're going to put that right across this little half inch flap we have on the box. And then you want to peel off the backing. And then we're going to fold this around. Fold that over and line up your edges. And then another little trick I do is once I get that lined up and tacked down, I just take my bone folder and run that over there to help crease that down even more. So now here's the beginning of that little bag. And then your little flaps, they just fold in. And we'll, I'm going to use some tear tape adhesive on these as well because I want this to hold a little. I'm going to put a heavier gift inside. So I'm just going to put a little bit of tear tape on each flap here. And then you're just going to fold this over, make sure it's pretty lined up and nice and square. And then just take your hand and put it inside and press that down. And then you're just going to pinch the top part of your bag. And now you have the little bag. Super cute and super fun, I think. So now we're going to finish decorating this. You want to cut one piece of that Shine On Specialty Designer Series paper. And you want that silver stripes pattern. And you're going to cut that at one and a half by four inches. Then you're going to need your triple banner bunch punch. And we're going to punch out this one end. And you're going to slide this in here. And then you want to turn your punch over because we're not going to go all the way to the top. We just want to go a little bit here. And then you're going to punch. So then your piece looks like this. Once you have your banner punched out, then you're going to need your Simply Score scoring tool here. And we're going to score this at a half an inch. So put that up tight here in the corner and then score that at a half an inch to help make it easier to fold over the box. And then once you have that part scored, fold that over, crease that down with your bone folder. And then you want to take a stamping dimensional and we're going to place this on the back in the center here. And then what you want to do is we're going to place this on the front of the box. So I just, while it's still open, I fold this over the top, 
fold this down and then just attach it so it's in the center. So it'll look like that. Then you want to cut five and a half inches of the Melon Mambo and Basic Black Baker's Twine. And you're going to pull this apart because we're going to be using the Basic Black Baker's Twine out of this. So just grab a hold of it and un un untwirl it so you have that. And then you can save that other piece for another project. And then you're going to take and pull this apart again. There's six twine strings in there and we only need three. So then once you, you'll have that, just pull that apart so you have two pieces. And then save the other piece for another project. And then you're going to want to take some glue dots. And you're going to put this on the left side of that Shine On Designer paper. And we're going to put that string right on that glue dot and create a loop. And then attach it. And then we're going to create another loop, so attach that and make your loop. And then you'll need one more glue dot to finish that. So you'll put another glue dot on there, and then you're going to create this, the third loop. So you're going to make three loops total. And then once you have your loops made, this is what it's going to look like on there. Then you want to take your decorative label punch and a piece of the Watermelon Wonder card stock and we're going to punch out one of the decorative labels in the Watermelon Wonder card stock. Then you want to take your stamping sponge and your Watermelon Wonder ink pad. I cut my sponges into little pieces and then I punch a piece of card stock on there and staple that with the name written on there so then I always know what color that one goes to. And then you're just going to gently sponge the edge of that Watermelon Wonder cardstock just to give it some more color and make it distressed. So I do the edges and then I go back around and kind of brush it so it's coming up onto the flat part of the cardstock as well to help blend that in for a more finished look. So that's what it'll look like when you're done doing that. Then you want to take a stamping dimensional and you're going to put that onto the back and then you want to place this over this banner overlapping your ends here with to hide those glue dots and to give it a finished nice look. Then you want to cut one piece of basic black cardstock and you're going to cut that at a half an inch by three inches. Then you want to take your little banner punch and we're going to turn this over and we're going to punch out each end. So just place the cardstock through the top here and punch. And you've notched out one end. And then turn around and do the same thing on the other side. And now you've created a fun little cute banner. How cute is that? Then you want to take a stamping dimensional and you're going to place one on each side here. And this is going to hang off. So you want to make sure you don't put it all the way on the end. And then we're going to attach this going across that little Watermelon Wonder decorative punched piece. Then you want to take this stamp from Bloom and Love, ink it in Versamark, and stamp that onto some Whisper White cardstock. And then you're going to pour black embossing powder over that, tap it off, and then you're going to heat set this with your heat tool. Once you have that heat set, then you're going to need your inch and a quarter circle punch and we're going to punch out this image. So just turn your punch over, line that up so you can see where you're punching and punch that out. And then once you have that punched out, you're going to take your stamping sponge and you shouldn't need to actually re-ink it because this is a heavier colored ink. So you can just go ahead and sponge that around the edge of that Whisper White cardstock. And then once you have that sponge, we're going to put a stamping dimensional onto the back and then you want to attach that to the center of your little basic black banner. So then it'll look like this so far. Then you want to take one of the iced rhinestone basic jewels. These were a fun favorite from the holiday catalog and I'm so excited that these carried over to our occasions catalog. I just love these. And then we're going to place that over here onto the right side, overlapping all the layers. And then you want to take some rhinestone basic jewels and they come with a little strip. We're going to cut three of these off this. 
Let's just cut three. And then we're going to want to place this over here on the left side of your banner here towards the bottom. Really adding some bling to this project. And then once you have that part done, I took a binder clip that I bought at Target. You can buy silver ones, gold ones. There's a lot of um, different colors available there. I thought this would be a fun way to secure this at the top. How cute is that project? Now be sure to visit my blog, rubberredneck.typepad.com for that free project sheet on this project. Find out how and where you can purchase all these supplies to recreate this fun project and to find out more details about my upcoming special online Valentine class. Thank you so much for watching.